All right, guys, we got another one. Uh, today we're going to do the the moose. Now, if you've been following along, hopefully you just saw the ones with the silly donkeys where we built this one. There's two videos on that. There's the tooling video, and then there's the the forging this out of the steel video. The same skills that are in that one are going to do the moose. Okay, there's a few things we have to change that we're going to be showing you. But you're going to want to watch those videos over and over, and uh, you'll, you'll see how we're going to take and make the moose, okay? There's a few steps. If you're watching that video, same size bar, half by half, solid square, six inch piece is what I start with. When I build the ears, um, I cut the center the same. My spacing for the head and neck is the same, three inches of neck. 2 inch spacing on the head, uh, it's the same inch and a half, inch and three quarters for the ears, but we changed it, that's where we changed for the moose. Okay, I actually came up with a moose when I screwed up one of the donkeys and kept messing around and seeing what I could get out of the shape. One of the first moose I ever built is up over here, I'll have Mary, she can zoom in on that little coat here. That's one of the first moose I built and then I kept changing and changing and but it started with a messed up donkey head so I perfected it got it to where it looks right looks good so the first thing you're going to want to do is start out everything just like the donkey I built these bars and I get them all ready and then if I know I'm building a moose or if I've made a donkey and then this cut on the ears remember we cut the ears if I screw that up it usually goes into a moose because I'm going to cut it down the middle just like the donkey then I come in and I make two cuts right here so you see these two little cut lines what that does now is I've shortened up these ears big time by over half okay I've shortened them up if you look at this one you can see how much shorter the ears are that was the donkey he's had ears up to here now remember too all your steps are important. We'll get over to the details, but your steps here are very important. Okay, you've got to get your ears, your head spacing, and your neck, and your bar all done. Then you're going to go back to your ears, make your cuts, cut it little for these littler ears, and then you've got to finish your ears. They have to be done. they got to be done, and then you're going to fold your head spacing so you'll be folding that head over, and then you're going to be fullering in the line on the head, and then you will be to here, just where this one we just showed you. Okay, you'll have your ears, the head spacing, the head folded over, okay, and you'll have your fuller line down your nose. This from here is what we're going to show you today, because all these steps are the same as the donkey. So if you watch that video, hopefully we'll keep this one. There's a lot more to the moose. It's one of the only few things I've built that has two pieces. We'll explain the antlers. But up to here, it's the same as a donkey, except we've cut the ears short. We still have to shape them and finish them. And we still have to do a lot of adjusting for this face. So this is one where you're going to have to go back, watch that video where we built this dude. And you can see that we're, we're to the same point. His ears, all we have to do is cut them so they're short. And everything on the rest of it stays in the same proportions. So, going back to the moose. We've got it to there. Well, our key details is his head shape. Okay? You've got to turn your Google on and find us some pictures of a big old bull moose if that's what you want. Big old cow moose. You've got to find us some pictures. They are a weird looking animal, like the donkey, they're goofy. They got, they got this huge nose, they got this thing hanging off of their neck, they got this, I mean they got a monster snout of a nose. And once you get building it, it's pretty cool, it's pretty fun. So your first thing is your head shape. You're making a moose. So you got that fuller in line. I'm going to show you how to adjust this nose to get it pushed down because the moose has this big drop down nose. It's this big sloppy looking thing, okay? 
he's got it and then it has the antlers we'll show you and give you some dimensions on the antlers that I came up with okay I came up with just a little cutout I had to trace it draw it cut it we just cold form them I peen them with a ball peen hammer and then I shape them just to this and these are the only like I said this is one of the only two piece things I build besides like a spatula or a big spoon or something where these need to be welded or tacked on to the moose's head but I'll give you the dimensions of these I don't have any that I could send out or anything but I think you could come up with them if you got a buddy that's got a little plasma cutter you could even chisel these out you could even make them way different no moose's antlers are the same anyway so we'll show you the dimensions of those so that you got the right antlers some of the antlers only come out and have three little things on these big paddles you can you can make this as, as wild as you want I just haven't figured out how to do it in one piece yet and still have my ears so we just put them on they look good okay so we got the head shape antlers nose and the nostrils are important just like in the donkey, if you put the nostrils way up high, it looks like a dog or something. It looks way different. A moose doesn't have nostrils like that. I've tried to make these humorous and funny like the donkeys and cross-eyed and stuff. It doesn't quite work. It just kind of needs to be symmetrical and correct. And then it, you can still turn their eyes and make them look different ways, twist the head, and really bring them to life. But they're a little more... A little more sober than a jackass <laughs> okay they're they're but they're still fun okay so you got all these shapes the the dewlap or the bell they call it is this thing they got on the chin okay I'll, I'll show you I use the power hammer or I use my fly press with my top and bottom fuller but I have the side that are open remember how we pinch the scutes on the alligator I can pinch this and draw that thing out on his neck or I can put it in the dies of my power hammer where I have the sides are open okay you'll have to find something I did a first the first ones with the ball peen on the corner of an anvil and I drew it that way it can be done I've done it or if you have a, a top and bottom I don't know what you call a ball peen I have one somewhere it's a small it's like a ball peen hammer that sits in my hardy so I have that little round and then I can hit it from the top and use in between two rounds. You can come up with some tools, just like I came up with the tools for the teeth and mouth. And, okay, that's going to our next step. We got the ears. They're our first ones. Same thing as the donkeys. If you, if you don't know, go back, watch that video. I use that little fuller. I get some texture lines in there and I get the ears curved. The same thing, once this hook is, the head is built and it's turned down, I turn these ears up to match this angle. It'll all make sense if you've watched both videos. The mouth, the mouth on a, on a, I almost called it a donkey, but the mouth on the moose is clear up underneath this, this nose, this big old bulb of a nose that they have. It's clear up underneath. And I have been real happy with just cutting a line. As you can see the nostrils. I've just been cutting that line in the bottom. This is all I do for the dewlap or the bell. And you can see that I've set my ears in line with the back of this hook. That still gives me plenty of room when I go to put, if I can, <laughs> when I go to put these antlers up here on his head and to tack them on and bend them. And, it still gives me plenty of room. And their ears are like anything. They turn their ears to what they're looking at. It's, it's a wild animal. Turn your Google on, your imagination. Go find us some pictures. Watch a video of a moose. These are cartoony on purpose. Uh, we call this guy Morris. This has been Morris the Moose since we started building. Because of an old cartoon I watched when I was a kid, of Morris the Midget Moose. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Pretty funny, your kids will like it, grandkids will like it. So this is Morris, the midget moose. Um, 
think we got enough information here. We're going to take and we'll take you now to the anvil and we will start showing you that you've gotten from here to here. You can get from here to here with the video on the tooling and the donkeys. You can get to here. Okay, remember short ears, finish them, fold them over, fold your line in for your nose. This is where we're going to start today, turning this into this, or turning this one into a moose. So, that being said, I hope you got your key details. Turn everything on, light your forge. Let's go show you how to turn this into a moose. So, let's go. Okay, we want to take just a second, and uh, I've had a lot of guys ask me where I got these tools. Okay, now some of them I've made. These ones, uh, a while back, I've had them for, oh man, I don't even know. It's, it's, it's over eight years probably. Okay, I bought this set from Pay Tool Company. That's where I got them from. I will try my best. I'm not a computer person. Try my best to, in the description of this video, put a link for Pay Tool Company's website. I use the one in Camp Verde. Uh, Amy has two stores, I believe. I've never had any trouble with them. They've, they've been awesome when I've ordered stuff. That's where I got my hammers from. Um, they have, I'm a big fan of these big cross beams and stuff. Okay, this is where I got my hammers from. This is where I got this punch set from. It's where I got this cross beam you see me use a lot in this video. And it's where I got all these punches and these hot cut. She has these there. And these are awesome. If you want a good hot cut and you got a couple bucks to just get you on, you can make you one. I had some money at the time and I bought some. This is a brand new one because my other one is still just fine. I bought two thinking I'd wear it out or break it or whatever. I haven't even put a dent in the other one. I've just resharpened it. But that's where I got my eye punches, my center punch, the ball punches. They got whole sets of them. They're S7 tool steel. Hopefully I'm correct on that. They have all kinds of little eye punches, eagle eye punches, wolf eye punches. I bought a whole set and I have only rebought the quarter inch eye punch. And that's after years of making donkeys and beating the crap out of these things. The top is soft. I do not find them marking my hammers or anything. I don't have to have a separate hammer. Uh, awesome tools. Pay tool company. I'll put the description in there. Like I said, I'm not sponsoring anything by them, but it, this is an awesome set. Wherever they're getting it, I checked the website. They're still selling them. These are good tools. These are awesome hammers, and it's an awesome company. Every time I order, I think I got my ply press from them, my hammers, my punches. Some hot cuts, the tongs, they got tongs, they got they got everything you're gonna need. They got anvils, they got forges, they got furrier supplies. Pay tool company. You're awesome. That's guys, that's where I got these punches from. So check them out. Okay guys, so hopefully you've gotten to here. You got your ears done, you got your head folded over, you got your fuller lines in, your neck. If you're to here, this is where we're going to turn it into a moose. Nice short ears. Now we're going to heat it up. We're going to be working on the face. Not the face, but we're going to work on the edge of this anvil. And this is where we're going to start working the nose. I'll show you what I do to start pushing this nose all the way down to turn this into a moose. Okay, so get them on the edge of the anvil. Start working this nose down. And in, and down. Around, I'm using that fuller to rock that nose in, push it down. As I push it down and roll it, I come in on the front, roll it up, roll it back down. You can see that we've started pushing the nose down and we've started also it's creating a line on that inside and I go and tell you see this top how you can still see the fuller in the top 
I go until I make that disappear. You want this nose to be even with this bottom of this fuller. Okay, so we'll keep going. Okay, so keep going. Roll it. Bring it to your near side. Square them up. Keeping it together. Back to your far side. Work the end of your nose, rotating it. Roll them up, rotate it, twist it. Almost there, I still got a little bit of lines down there, but you can see what we've created. We got a big old nose in there. You still can take it near side of your anvil and come up this way. You can clean these lines up. Okay, clean them up there. You're gonna be keeping those sides pretty flat. You're going to be pinching it in a vise like we did the donkey here in a minute anyway to do all the facial features. But be careful not to stretch this too much. Okay, keep it hot. Keep it working. Keep moving it. Rotating to get all those sides. Work this nose in. Try to still keep it short. Okay, you can come to that near side. Flatten these sides up. True them up a little bit. Seat that nose back together. Remember, you're looking for a rounded moose nose. I got a round nose. Come in and plenish it a little bit. Plenish. Clean them up. Round them up. And you can see that we've got our shape. We got that nose all the way down. We have a nice steep nose, a big nose. Plenty of room for nostrils. If we want this a little rounder, we can still come here and even just knock those sharp corners off, get his nose right where you like it. You're going to have to look at some pictures of a moose to see what their profile looks like. Okay, so now we got it to here. Now we're going to take and we'll do all the facial features, the expressions, so we'll do the eyes and the nostrils and the mouth and then we'll draw out this uh, this bell out of this material that's right here from our fold and then we'll have our profile, we'll have our moose head. Okay, don't hurt to do a little file work. Sometimes these things will fish lip just a little bit. The details are up to you. I have a lot of guys tell me that my stuff's kind of crude. And <laughs> I, we're building a video to show you the steps. You can take all the time in the world you want and round these up and file them, fire up your grinder, whatever you want to do. Okay, I'm just knocking this down a little bit because I know I'm going to put a mouth there. It will look 
funny if I have that funny lip there. So now we'll take this, we're going to heat it up, and just like we did the donkey, we're going to set it in the vise, we're going to set the eyeballs, we're going to set them out a little bit, the fuller mark is still there, from just like we did the donkey, they have a center line and two edges. I can still see where my edge is, that's where I'm going to set my eye and my eye. This is a half by half bar. The eyeballs on these are a quarter inch eyeball tool from Pay Tool Company. That's the same eye. So we'll set it right in there, off to the sides a little bit, and then we'll set our pupil. So we got the eyes, we're coming right on that fullered line. A little bit out. Give a little twist. Set that eyeball. We'll come over here. Set this eyeball. Kind of hit the bottom. Gives that a little deeper eye look. Okay, so we set our eyeballs. We got them right down that crease of that line. This stays flat across there because that's where your antlers connect. The only thing we do to it is set some pupils. Set his eyes. Now I'm going to roll it up on the other side of the vise and I'm going to mark with my center punch. I'm going to mark where I want his nostrils to be so that I can heat it back up and find those. So I'm going to roll it up. This is where he's going to be when it gets hot. But I'm going to take my center punch. And I know I want his nostrils on the side, like right here. So I'm just going to mark them with the center punch. Nice, good mark. Try and even them up. Now I know I've got a good set with my center punch. So I can come back now, I'm going to heat him up. This is the eighth inch ball punch. I'm going to set it in there when it's hot. I'm going to drive it up, get me a nice little nostril flare. Then I'm going to turn it down and I'm going to drive it down until I slide right up. It's going to create what I think makes a good looking nostril. So we'll drive in, drive in, come down and we'll drive it and tap it right up. Then you'll be able to cut your mouth right down here with that hot cut and the moose head is actually done from there we'll bend it show you the finished shape and then uh, we'll talk about the antlers okay so I'm going to set him right here right under his eyes pinch it and we'll drive that eighth inch ball punch right there I can see my mark a little bit and I'm gonna drop it in until he comes out like that. Okay so I'm gonna come on the other side I got enough heat and drive it in drive it up now I'm gonna drive it up and down and make a little Just a little groove on it. They have kind of a big long nostril. Okay, so for the mouth, set him in, pinch him down, grab your hot cut, come in under your nostrils, down low. I just kind of drive your mouth in there.
you can make him smile. <laughs> you can have him. A couple ways you do it. You can drive this down a little bit. Show up a little better. That's about all I need for the mouth. And the head. Okay, so we got the head. Here's our mouth, the nostrils. We got the profile we want. Now we're just going to take and uh, you guys will be able to use whatever you got. But we're going to take this material right here. And we're going to draw out this bell. And that's really what's going to make it a moose. <laughs> it's not just big old nose. It's this right here. So squish it. Uh, if you come to your anvil. You come to the corners in here, you can take a ball peen and start working that out. Okay, you can do a lot of different things. But real quick, I'm going to show you in the power hammer. Okay, so after I've done that, usually I gotta come in with a ball peen and I try and get this line sealed back up just a little bit. Nothing crazy, I don't, but I can usually tap it not like that. Without too much. Don't change any detail. You can roll these corners. Like I said, the detail, the absolute total detail is up to you. Take that as far as you want to go. Well, that's the bell. You can see how it's got the profile we wanted now. We got the nose and the nostrils and the mouth and the eyes. Now the last thing we're going to do is set this for the hook. So we're going to roll this around, and it's pretty easy. So we'll get this rolled around, and we'll set those ears. Then we're ready for antlers. Okay, so I come in, and I grab the nose right here, and I put that bell right there. That way I can come in without wrecking it. And I can come in here, like the donkey and the other hooks. I can take this and give it a little twist. And set this moose head where I want it. Then I can come in here, stand these ears up. Stand his ears up a little bit. A hold of it. Now we've got our moose. Now we're ready to clean him up, and we'll get ready to we'll show you how we do the antlers. That's where you're at, but that's the moose head right there. If you get it to there, you got your moose. Now you just got to build you some antlers to put on there. The profile looks good. The eyes look good. Like I said, it is a little cartoony, but it's kind of how my stuff is, so I like it. If you don't, you can order you some eye punches that are a little smaller. Drive them off to the side. You can really put all the detail you want in it. But I guarantee you, when this one's done, antlers are on. Anyone that looks at it is going to go, that's a moose. We have our profile, we got our moose. The only thing it is missing is a pair of antlers. So let me show you the antlers. Okay, this is the one that's done. This is what they start out as. I cut these on my plasma cutter. Like I said, I, I could forge some. We probably will forge some. I have some clients every now and then that they don't want anything plasma cut. They don't want anything like that. They want everything forged. So 
as long as they'll pay for it, or if that's the only way you got to make it, do it. Take your quarter inch bar, pound the ends out, cut them, start doing your set of antlers, tack them onto the head. I take these, I clean them up, I ball peen them on my anvil to texture the whole thing. As you see in this one, they're all textured. You can kind of, you're going to have to do whatever you want for antlers. No moose has the same, so they can all be different. They just need to be like a moose antler with this big palmation of some kind and everyone will know, oh, it's a moose, okay? But I take this set and then I have these little oxygen bottle. The thing I do with it is it's perfect on the shape on the bottom to round out my antlers. So I'll take a bob pin and I will shape that antler palm and I get it shaped and then I take a pair of pliers and I bend these ends around and tweak them around. And these are your eye guards. And like I said, you're going to have to look up some moose, learn about a moose. These are their eye guards that come up and protect their eyes when they're fighting. So you can place them in different spots. It will change the way the moose looks. They have where the antlers connect is a big knot on their head. Okay, so you can take when you put these on, you'll be able to take them tack them on there or whatever and if you need to get in there with a file or whatever to clean up some of your stuff I've TIG welded them, I've brazed them I've uh, used a wire feed and put a tack, that's what I have that little notch right here for so that's where I used to just put a tack right there uh, as long as nobody was like really yanking them around, I never had any come off I've never had anybody say oh my antlers came off Otherwise, I'd ask them to send them back and I'll fix it. Okay? We've had some of these. A lady in Alaska has a whole bunch of a big, big uh, resort. She's had some a long time. We've never had any problems with them. Let me give you some dimensions on this antler that I have here, just so you got a good idea of what we got. These ones are four and a half. Well, they're four and three quarters wide. Okay, they're not a big set. They're four and three quarters, and that's to the outside of these spikes. This way, they're three and a quarter tall from these eye guards out to the top of here. Okay, so you could draw these. This piece I got in the center is a quarter inch thick and an inch and a quarter wide. Okay, this is an inch and a quarter from here to here, quarter inch thick. So if you draw some of these out, you got a plasma cam buddy, he can knock some out for you. That's the size. I believe I used a decal or somewhere where I got this pattern and then redrew parts of it to use for it. But you can see that the width on the head is pretty good. Usually fits just outside his ears. Matches pretty well for a half by half folded bar. It'll get it out there and build a, a good looking set of antlers. Okay guys, we got it. We got the moose. I uh, got this set of antlers on this one so you can see a finished one. Uh, hope you get a chance to try it. Make you some antlers, take your bar half by half, six inches long, get it into the shape, watch the other videos, but we really appreciate you guys watching the videos, uh, trying to get this YouTube thing to work. So watch the other video, get your ears right, get your nose right, get him drawn down, drawn out, watch your profiles, get your key details. Uh, this is our finished product. This is one of our Morris Midget Moose. We've welded that back in here. That's that why I have the little groove in the antler. It's where I put my weld, my tack, pretty much. But that's our moose. These can be bent any way you want. They're all different. Okay. 
fun project. It's a good project. Uh, push your skills. This is a it's a moose. <laughs> There's no no denying when you go to show somebody or they hang it on their wall that it is a moose. The profiles and all your stuff is correct. Hope you enjoyed that one, guys. There's your the turtle. Hopefully you're building some of the projects. Um, I will put a link in this one to Pay Tool Company. Try to get that figured out on my end. To This is where I got the tools, guys. Hope you enjoyed the donkey and the moose videos. We appreciate you guys watching the videos. It's awesome. It allows us. Hopefully we'll just be able to keep going. Make cool stuff. Go on adventures with you. Take you with us. Uh, we got lots of ideas. Uh, if you saw the boat, we're kind of weird. We bought a big old boat. Got lots of other boats. I want to forge some aluminum pieces that go on it. Aluminum is actually quite fun to forge. If you never have, I'll show you what I know about it. And uh, really, we're going to have some fun. So turn that imagination on. Light your forge. Build something cool. And now you know how to build these donkeys and these moose and these faces. You'll be able to build, take those techniques and make whatever your favorite is. I really like the moose. I really like the donkeys because of how silly they are. Have some fun, guys. Send me your pictures if you build one. We will build you the, the video on how I do these hooks all the way out. I've been doing this style for a long time now. Real happy with it, like it, got it figured out. And we'll share it with you. So please keep subscribing, share the videos. And uh, have some fun, guys. So until the next one, let's go.